Hello everyone and welcome to part 18 of the story of Nikola Tesla's life. Tesla made the rounds in New York trying to find investors for what he thought would be a viable system of wireless transmission, whining and dining them at the Waldorf Astorius Palm Garden, the hotel where he was living at the time, the Players Club, and Delmonico's. In March 1901, he obtained $150,000 from J.P. Morgan in return for a 51% share of any generated wireless patents, and began planning the Wardenclyffe Tower facility to be built in Shoreham, New York, 100 miles or 161 kilometers east of the city on the north shore of Long Island. By July 1901, Tesla had expanded his plans to build a more powerful transmitter to leap ahead of Marconi's radio-based system, which Tesla thought was a copy of his own. He approached Morgan to ask for more money to build a larger system, but Morgan refused to supply any further funds. In December 1901, Marconi successfully transmitted the letter S from England to Newfoundland, defeating Tesla in the race to be the first to complete such a transmission. A month after Marconi's success, Tesla tried to get Morgan to back an even larger plan to transmit messages and power by controlling vibrations throughout the globe. Over the next five years, Tesla wrote more than 50 letters to Morgan, pleading for and demanding additional funding to complete the construction of Wardenclyffe. Tesla continued the project for another nine months into 1902. The tower was erected to its full height of 187 feet, or 57 meters. In June 1902, Tesla moved his lab operations from Houston Street to Wardenclyffe. Investors on Wall Street were putting their money in Marconi's system, and some in the press began turning against Tesla's project, claiming it was a hoax. The project came to a halt in 1905, and in 1906, the financial problems and other events may have led to what Tesla biographer Mark J. Seifer suspects was a nervous breakdown on Tesla's part. Tesla mortgaged the Wardenclyffe property to cover his debts at the Waldorf Astoria, which eventually amounted to $20,000. He lost the property in foreclosure in 1915, and in 1917, the tower was demolished by the new owner to make the land a more viable real estate asset. Thank you for listening to this session of Nifty Narrated Stories. For more information about where this content was sourced, please refer to the description below. If you enjoyed today's session, please don't hesitate to like and subscribe for more great stories. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you all have a great day.